Hello and welcome to part 5 of my video series on how to use Blender 2.7. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to make buttons to add to your screens in your game. Now in the last video, in part 4, we talked about how to make different screens of your game and how to switch between them using collisions. In the last video, we made this new You Lose screen and we used uh, the Scenes feature in Blender. In other words, right now I'm in my scene called Screen Lose and we have multiple scenes now. So I have a screen for my game and again, it's a very simple game. It's a character that's a cube and it hits the bad monkey head it switches over to the you lose screen. If you want to go ahead and download this exact file, I'll link to it in the description area below. And let's go ahead and jump in and start making some buttons. So I'm going to switch over using this little button here to the lose screen. And I'm going to add a cube, which will be our replay or try again button. So I'll press shift A on my keyboard or use the add menu. Shift A, I'm going to add a new mesh plane or a cube actually. And I'm going to scale it. So I'll tap S to scale it to make it smaller. And then maybe I'll use my scale gizmo. Um, that's the one, that one right there. And I'll stretch it out on the X axis to make sort of the shape that I want. Because my camera, if you watched the last video, my camera is an orthographic camera. I'm actually gonna divide this window into two. I'll grab this little area, drag it over to make a second window. And then I'll go view and camera to break out of the camera. This is an orthographic camera. It's a two dimensional camera. So it actually doesn't matter that this is a cube. Um, but what I could have done is I could have made a plane too. It doesn't matter. Maybe I'll just stretch that down with my scale gizmo again. Uh, let's go ahead and move it down. So I'll use my move gizmo or I'll press G on my keyboard and I'll move it to right about there. I'm going to add some text to put on it. So I'll press shift A on my keyboard or use the add menu. I'm going to add a text object. I'm going to press tab to go into the text objects edit mode. I'll backspace. I'm going to say uh, retry. Okay, and I'll press tab to go back into object mode. Now this text is way too big and it's sort of not, uh, or it's in the middle of my cube. So again, I'm going to make that second window again. Maybe I should just leave it there. And I'll press zero on numpad to break out of the uh, camera view. Uh, or of course you could use view camera. And I'll move it just up a little bit. It is two dimensional text, so it, it's hard to get it quite close to it, uh, but that seems to work okay. Let's scale it down to fit. So I'll tap S to scale it down, and that looks like it might work. Um, let's press G and put it kind of right in the right spot. I have very thick outlines in my Blender settings. That's why you're seeing the orange very, very thick. Yours won't be. And I'll move it over and just about to the right size. Now we want to combine these two objects, the text and the uh, letters into one. So I have to convert this text into a mesh object and then we can join them together. So with the text selected, if I press Alt C on my keyboard, Alt C brings up the convert to menu. Uh, so with text selected Alt C and I'll select mesh from text. That's what this op uh, option is here. So it's now a mesh. I'm going to start adding some materials. So I'm going to make uh, the block green. So with the uh, block selected, and I go to the materials tab, I'll click new. I'm going to make it have a green color. And again, if you're using a 2D or you have a 2D menu screen and you make a material, you might want to select shadeless under shading. Again, uh, in the Blender game engine, if you're used to the cycles render engine, uh, in Blender, this is a different way of adding materials. This is the same way that you would add materials in the old Blender render engine. In fact, we still are in that. I'll switch over to Blender game. Um, yeah, the cycle render engine is different. Uh, so if you're used to that, this will take some getting used to. I'm going to click on Shadeless so that it turns just solid green. And I'll do the same thing with the, the retry text. I'll add a material to it and it'll have a diffuse color of, let's say, white actually. That looks okay. Maybe. Hmm, be pink, sure. And I'll use shadeless as well, so it just looks like one color. I'll join those two together. So with the text selected, I'll hold shift down on my keyboard. I'll right click to select them both. Yes, they are both selected. And I'll press control J. Control J means join. And I recommend that you select the text first and then hold shift and select the box second in that order. Uh, so then control J. And now they're all one mesh. If you select them in the other order, um, the origin point will be at the last object that you selected, which would be the text, but I prefer having the box be where my origin is, that uh, little orange dot where the gizmo comes off. Okay, so I have a button and it's on my screen. I'll rearrange things a little bit, put that a little bit higher up, and maybe put the text a little bit higher up as well. But I want this to work. 
So how do we do that? Well, we're going to use our logic bricks and use our mouse interaction to switch scenes. So with my button selected, I'm going to add actually a couple more sensors. There's two things that have to happen here. My mouse has to be over this object and I have to click my left mouse button. Both of those things have to be happening at the same time, the mouse over and the mouse left click in order to switch scenes. So we're going to add actually two sensors and combine them. This is the first time that we're doing that in this video series. So I'm going to add to this object two sensors. I'm going to add a mouse sensor and it's going to be left button. So I'll leave that the way it is. I'm going to add a second sensor. It's also going to be a mouse sensor, but this time we're going to be uh, um, sensing for mouse over and it's mouse over this object, not mouse over any. So mouse over, I'm going to add the actuator. In this case, we're switching scenes and we learned how to do that in the last video. So I'll add an actuator. It's going to be a scene actuator and we don't want to restart this loose screen. We want to set the scene. We want to make it go to a different scene. That's what set scene is for. And the scene I'm going to be switching to is my game. We only have two, so I'm going to switch back to the game screen. Now, to make two sensors or two logic bricks work together, we want to have an and in the middle. And that's what that and means. I haven't talked about that yet. If I just click and drag, like normally, this port into the uh, actuator's input port, it makes an and sensor. Of course, I'm actually going to delete that because we can make an and uh, manually right there. There's also or or um, exclusive or and different things we can do here, even add Python script. And by default, if you just connect a sensor to an actuator, it makes an and. But I'm going to do that manually. So I'll select and. It doesn't really matter if you do it manually or just make it the first one. I'm going to connect these, these all uh, manually uh, quite easily. But this is where the and comes in very handy. If I want these two things, in other words, the mouse over and the left button to be, both have to be true in order to activate the new scene or the switch scene, I can just connect these two both to the same and. And that's what that and means. These both have to be true. In other words, this one has to be true and this one has to be true in order to trigger the actuator at the other side of the and. I hope that makes sense. So two things now have to be true together, both at the same time, in order for um, the, the actuator to be activated because of this word and. If we use the word or, Either one of these things separately could trigger the, the, the uh, new set scene. So I'm going to use and. We don't want to have either. We want to have both have to be true. So I'll use and. I hope that makes sense. So I think that's all good. I think that if we go back to the game screen, it all should work. I can't press P uh, from this screen. Actually, it seems like I can now. I'm not sure why that is. Let's go back to screen game though. Uh, I'm going to save this file and I'll press P to play the game. So I'm going to control my character using the right arrow key on my keyboard. I'll press over. I'll hit the monkey. It says you lose. Now there's a problem here. I can't see my mouse cursor and by default that is the case. How do you stop that from happening or how do you actually show your mouse? Well, I'll press escape on my keyboard. The trick here is that you want to add a new actuator to the event where you're switching screens. In this case, I'm using my character to hit the monkey head and that hitting the monkey head is how we're switching screens. But when I switch screens over to the loose screen, I also want to re-show or show for the first time my mouse cursor. So I'm going to go to my character, select my character in my game scene, and I'm going to add a new actuator to my collision. So right now, if I collide with my bad guy property, it sets the new scene, it sets it to the loose screen. Well, I want to do two things over here. I want to set the scene and I want to show my mouse. So again, we're going to be using this and, it's just named and.001 by default, I'm going to add a new actuator. And this and is going to actually tell it to do two actuators or two things. So I'm going to click add actuator. We're going to use the mouse actuator right there. And as you can see, visibility visible or not. So I want to make the mouse visible as soon as my character collides with the monkey head. It's going to make the mouse visible and it's going to set the scene to my loose screen. So I'm going to connect the and to two things just like we did over here. And so now if I press P, my mouse is not there. But if I press the right arrow, it goes to the loose screen and I can now see my mouse. So I can click on retry. That should work. But wait, I can still see my mouse cursor. I don't want to be there. 
Well, I can do the exact same thing as I did down here. I can set it to invisible when I press the retry button. So I'm gonna go ahead and press escape on my keyboard. I'm going to change my scene to my loose screen. And then when we actually click on the retry button, in other words, when our mouse is hovering over uh, the button and we're pressing the left mouse button down, it's gonna set the scene back to the uh, game screen, but I wanna do two things. I wanna add a mouse actuator and I wanna uncheck visible so it's light. And then I'll connect the AND to both of those. So as you can see, this AND is very powerful. We can require two conditions in order for something to come true and or, or we can have it have multiple outcomes. In fact, you can have the same trigger or triggers um, trigger or make actuators happen or have lots of actuators happen at the same time. This is a very powerful system of using these logic bricks and these controllers, the AND or the OR, to make multiple things happen from multiple triggers. It's great. Let's go ahead and try this out. So when the button is clicked, it's gonna set the new scene back to the game and it's gonna make the mouse invisible again. So let's go ahead and try that out. I'm gonna switch back to my game screen. I'll press P on my keyboard and then I'm gonna press the right arrow to lose the game. It's gonna to go to the you lose screen. I'll click on retry. I can see my, my mouse fine right now. As soon as I click on retry, it hides my mouse again. So that's great. I can play the game again. I can lose, mouse is back. There we have it. That'll be it for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.